We're in Windows 10 Hyper-V, and let's say that we'd like to add another hard drive to our virtual machine. Well, it's pretty easy to do. We just need to right-click on the virtual machine, make sure it's turned off, and go to Settings. And while we're in Settings, we're going to go over to where it says SCSI Controller. And there we have the option to click Add. Now, if you see IDE as well as SCSI Controller, then that means that you're running a Generation 1 virtual machine. And that's fine, too. This will work for that. However, you have to make sure that the uh, IDE type of uh, connection is not already in use. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. So we've got our SCSI Controller. Let's go ahead and click Add to our hard drive. So click Add. And we see that under the SCSI Controller, and we have just one of them, is, uh, has a location of number two, and it says it's in use. So we can't use that. So we see zero, one, two, they're all in use. We can't use those. So let's go ahead and use the next number. Oh, it doesn't have to be the next number, but let's choose the next number that is not in use. And this case is number three. So now we want to create this new virtual hard disk. So we need to go find some free space and grab it. So we have a fixed size option, which will run the fastest, the dynamically expanding option, which is the default. And that won't run quite as fast, but it won't use the space until it needs it. And then we have the differencing option. That's where you end up with a parent-child relationship with another disk, and it's not one that's generally recommended. So let's just go ahead and ignore that. Let's choose our fixed size because we want to run as fast as possible. And we'll just call this expansion, although you can call it anything you want. And then it's going to give us our location of where that drive is going to be. Now, the next thing it's going to do is give us a size. So do we want to uh, go ahead and use the contents of a specified physical disk? No, nope, that's going to be too much. Do we want to go ahead and choose a specific size? Yes, we do. I'm going to go ahead and choose just the one gigabyte. And uh, we'll go ahead and choose Next, and we'll choose Finish. And we'll go ahead and apply it, and click OK. Now, if you got an error when you clicked Applied, then it means you chose one of those in-use options I was talking about earlier. Let's go ahead and start this up and start using our available storage. We're going to log in. And then we're going to open up a program which we're going to need in order to use that storage. So by default, that storage is not available to just start using. We actually have to make a change in the server to make that available. So we now see our server is brought up. And again, we're running on a Windows 10 host, as you see here. All right, so it is running. So now we need to go into Computer Management. And we can start by going through Server Manager. So there's two different places where we can format and partition this new storage space. One is in Server Manager itself, and the other is in Computer Management. Now, Computer Management is the more traditional route, which we're going to use. It's a little less complicated looking, uh, but you do have a lot more options using the Server Manager route. So we'll at least take a look at the Server Manager route uh, before we go off to Computer Management. Our server manager program is up. Let's click on File and Storage Services, and then we'll click on Disks. And there is our C drive, which is 50 gigabytes, and there's the one gigabyte drive that we just added. Now, I only added one gigabyte just to make this process go a little bit more quickly. So we can right click on there and choose to bring online and then we can format it, but it doesn't give us a great graphical view of how this looks. So let's go to tools and choose computer management, which is what I prefer for some of the more simpler tasks. So let's click on storage, disk management, and now it shows us graphically our one gigabyte partition. So we click on the left-hand side, we right-click on it and choose Online, and then it shows that it's not initialized. So now we've got to right-click on it again and initialize it. So we have the option for the MBR or the GPT. GPT is there by default. MBR is good for up to two terabytes per partition. GPT can go much larger, and it doesn't really hurt us to just go ahead and use that, even though it's a smaller size. It says it's online, so now we need to do one more step. We have to right-click and choose to create a volume. So right-click and choose New Simple Volume. Next, 
and we'll just choose the maximum amount. Now you see the maximum amount is no longer one full gigabyte. You only see a 990 megabytes. That's because there is some overhead that makes it run. We can choose the drive letter. We can also mount it into inside, inside another folder if we're running out of hard drive space in that particular drive. Or we can just say don't assign a path, a drive letter to the path at all. Now, if we hit the drop down on the drive letter, we can choose any available drive letter there is. If it's not there, it means it's not available. Now we can format the drive. We've got a few different options. And the default is NTFS, which is a good one. REFS is better. It has self-healing properties, but you cannot expand or shrink it uh, very easily. Uh, you need a third-party program to shrink it. So let's just go ahead and forget that one for now. And then we want to perform a quick format. So let's go ahead and click Next and Finish. So because it's only one gigabyte, it goes pretty quickly, and we see that we have our E drive available. Let's click on File Explorer, and we should see an E drive there. Click on this PC. And there is our E drive ready to be used. So that's how you add a hard drive to a Hyper-V virtual machine in Windows 10.